Well, hello there, everyone. Ravenstar here. And we also have my little buddy, Cheeps the Gaming Bird. Who, he just turned 23, by the way. Now, today's video is on the APF MP1000. It's a pretty rare cartridge-based system. You're probably not going to see too many of these out in the wild or even in your local game store. Um, they came out in 1978 and they were made by APF Electronics. Now, APF stands for Al and Phil Freeman, who, uh, they were two brothers that made the, the company APF. It's an 8-bit console, and it's from the second generation of home video game systems. Now, APF also made another console in 1976. Here's a Pong clone that they made. It's called the APF TV Fun. I think it's really nice looking. Very 1970s with the wood grain. But it's just simply a Pong clone. That's all it does is play Pong. It's pretty nice though. It's really, looks like it's pretty well made. So let's get back to our system that we're talking about today, the APF MP1000. So it's uh, got, also got the wood grain right up front. And unfortunately, its controllers are hardwired in. So if they break, it would have to, the whole thing would have to be repaired, like opened up and fixed to get a new controller to work. If they slide into the front like that. There's a, it says left and right here for your controllers. They have this numeric pad on it that looks a whole lot like a calculator pad. And that's because APF also made calculators as well. So I bet you they just probably just reuse some of the buttons for calculators for this system. There's a power button, reset. Oh, and this, um, the MP1000 also has a power light, which you would think most consoles would have, but not necessarily. I'll sh talk about that in a minute. Here's the cartridge slot. Opens the air. That's not great. Oh, here's the uh, power brick, if you're interested in seeing if you can read that. So oh, my finger got in the way. Okay, that's the power brick that came with it. And they also, oh, the power, let's see, the fire buttons in the back here. That's how you fire. So you push the buttons there, move the joystick, it's the joystick, and it's very crunchy. I mean, can you hear that? How crunchy those buttons are? And the stick as well, just all crunches when you play it. It's crazy. Fire button up there. Both are pretty much the same controllers. And here we have the wire, the audio visual video cable that goes into the back of the TV. Now, some people, like if you're really old school, you use one of the switch boxes, but we don't. We use one of these converters that go into a CRT. Well, this goes right on here, just slips right on. And then this part, you screw into the back where the cable goes into the TV. So, so that's what I use to hook it up. And then to plug it in, you use your power power brick and the end, and it goes in right th into that hole right there. So that's how you set it up. So it's quite easy. Now I heard online a lot of people have trouble getting these to work um, because it has a whole lot of incompatibility with uh, certain TVs. So I'll have to see if we can get this one up and running. Okay, well, I've pulled up a second one here. This one on the left looks very, very similar, doesn't it? But it's actually the second model that came out. This one is the M1000. See, there's no P. See, that's the MP1000, and this is the M1000. It's the second model. So it's the newer one, the newer one that came out. Notice that they kind of cheapened it down and removed the power light 
and they removed the P. I don't know. I don't know why they did that, but I guess to tell them apart. But this one was uh, packaged with or what meant to go with the imagination machine, which was a computer uh, a com that you put this into a computer uh, right on the top. It's like slips on, snaps on. You have a uh, like a J shaped uh, thing to attach it to the actual computer. It had a keyboard and a cassette drive and things like that. Um, but it was very expensive and I believe it was only sold in the northeast of the United States. So we didn't have them all over the country. So they are quite rare. A lot of people um, don't get to see those. I've never seen one in person but I have seen videos um, and this slips right into there. Uh, but I do believe that both of them will work with the computer, the imagination machine. But this one was just a second version uh, that was made right after. Okay, well here is my game collection for the system. I do have two complete in the box. So the, this is what the box looks like. There are cartridges in there. I just have it in a protector here, that's why. Because, um, you know, there's not too many of these around. So that's what the box looks like. Um, and there were uh, probably a couple, maybe two more cartridges or so made for this, not including um, the basic cartridge that was for the imagination machine. Um, there were also some cassette tapes uh, for that computer, but um, I'm just collecting the cartridges, the game cartridges for the MP1000, not uh, the Imagination Machine, since I will never have one of those. So I have uh, boxing, bowling, micromatch, hangman, tic-tac-toe, doodle, blackjack, Pinball Dungeon Hunt Blockout. The other box one I have is Casino One Roulette Kino Slots. That's one of the most common ones, that one in Blackjack. I have a couple of carts of, of that one. Baseball. Katina. Katena. Brickdown Shooting Gallery. And UFO, Sea Monsters, Break It Down, Rebuild, Shoot with Variations. Wow, that's a great name for a game. Well, I'm sure there's several on there, but... Now, they are in color. Let me show you what the back of the cartridges look like. Just pretty much a big advertisement for other games that you can pick up. So these look a lot like the Emerson Arcadia cartridges, and I, they may actually be the same mold, I'm not sure, but uh, they do look and feel a lot like those. Okay, here is the owner's manual that came with the M1000. Uh, I saw this online selling for $20 just by itself, $20 or $25. So it's the manual. It, this, mine's in really great condition. I doubt anybody even looked at this. But to have paper from 1978 still in this condition is incredible. Talks about the controllers, the care of the unit. And going slow in case anybody out there needs this information. The installation. Now I was telling you about the switch boxes. You know, I don't, I didn't have to use it uh, for this one. I just used that little metal piece that goes into the the cable. But yeah, back in the seventies, we had to do that all the time. Use those switch boxes. Game description. Yeah, always, uh, you know, turn off the system before you remove cartridges. That's 
general practice for all cartridge systems. Don't just pull it out when it's still on, you know. Don't mess it up. Okay. Three month warranty. Wow, that's generous, isn't it? New York. Okay, that was cool. Okay, now we're going to look at the box that the, the M1000 came in. Now, it's not in the best shape, but they are quite rare. So I'm very happy to have this. On the front of it, it shows the screenshot for Rocket Patrol. That's a built-in game that both, both uh, versions of the system, both uh, units, had built in. So as soon as you turn on the TV with this booted up, you get the option to play Rocket Patrol. It's very, very, very simple. I mean, not even in the league of Atari, but it's probably why it didn't do so well. But uh, maybe we'll have a look at that game in just a minute. Here's the box. I have to be super careful with it. It's just falling apart. It's, you know, covered in tape and everything. There's some screenshots of the games I just showed you. I really love cartridge systems. That's uh, what I love to collect the most for. Because, you know, there's no online garbage. And, you know, when I'm 90, I could still play these things. And, you know, I'm worried about, you know, my Xbox and stuff. How later on in life, I mean, if they all have to be connected to servers and stuff. I mean, are all my discs useless? That's what I'm worried about. And I have so many of them and I'm just worried that's gonna happen. They're all gonna be useless, but I'm just gonna enjoy what I can so far with them, right? That's all you can do. The back looks just like the front, pretty much. Yeah, it's all held together with tape, but you know, it's a piece of history that I want to preserve. You know, somebody online is selling a protector for these, but they want $35. I'm like, geez, no way. So I'll just uh, keep it in plastic and take care of it. But no, you do have to be careful when you're collecting. Here's the uh, styrofoam. As I was saying, you do have to be careful with these old systems because I don't know what they used for the cords back then. The cords for these systems they just get all like melty after a while um, and they will actually change um, consistency and if they're like pressed up against the plastic of your systems it can actually destroy like like dig in and burn like marks into your plastic and that is true i mean i've had i have several systems that have core damage because they were pressed against the plastic during storage, like uh, for a long time. And when the, the structure of the, the rubber or plastic changes, it really messes up. Look, it, that's not from digging in, that's just from the, the change of the, the cords. All of that is all just the cords, you know, changing their, uh, pretty much their molecular structure, so it's crazy. And that does, it actually can ruin your consoles, like the underneath of a lot of consoles get uh, get ruined because of these stupid cords that, that change through time, unfortunately. So you have to be super careful. So when I do pack up anything with these old cords, I will put some, uh, some barrier in between the actual uh, console and those cords so that they don't ruin my console. All right, well, let's see if we can play the pack and game Rocket Patrol. So I've got it all plugged in. It's on channel three. And all I'm gonna do is press the power button. Okay, good, it's working. APF. TV, microcomputer, copyright, 
1978 Rocket Patrol. I'm going to press one player. Now I'm going to try the right controller, see if that works. Yes, okay. So I just pulled off the controller here. You can see the ships going by. And I am that little guy down there, little gun or whatever. And I'm supposed to shoot, so I guess do I use the fire button? Let's see. Oh yeah, okay. So I can't shoot again until that fire, that bullet goes off the screen. So. Okay, so I hit one, now it's sped up, all right? Okay, so let me go again. didn't speed up. Oh, jeez. Oh, I got one. No. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay, I got one. This is 1978 fun. Let's slow down. Okay, because that was the end of the bullets. You don't get many, many bullets. I got five points. That's all I got. So that's the packing game, Rocket Patrol. Well, at least there was a packing game. Okay. So I put in a cartridge. I just slipped it in the slot there. Went in pretty easy. This is UFO, Sea Monsters, Break It Down, Rebuild, Shoot. Great name, as I said. So that's in. It's on channel three, press power, comes up. All right, here's the screen. This is from 78. So there's all these different variations. There's, if you press number one, you get UFO one, UFO two, sea monsters, break it down, rebuild, shoot a little. Oh, these are great names. All right, let's just try UFO one. So I'm gonna, on my right controller, I'm pressing number one. You have to press it hard. Oh, you have to press it really hard. Okay, here's UFO. So it looks like I cannot move left or right. It's not changing anything. So it's just a shooting game. So I just try to shoot the UFOs or... Okay, now you only get a certain number of bullets and then it stops the game. So you have to just really... Okay, I got the lower one. Okay. Now, I think the left controller could probably join in because there's a left one, right? So, this is good for your couch co-op. Okay. Uh, no. Seventy-eight fun right here. I had more fun on the Atari, I think. Okay. Well, you get the idea. Oh, okay. Well, never mind. Um, I'm pressing. It stopped. That's how you know the game's over. It doesn't say game over or anything. This is so, so, you know, early. It doesn't have any of the, that. It just says that I have 18 points. So I guess if the second person had, you know, started up, they could have played at the same time and you just see who gets the best score. So that's UFO. Now, I don't want to play too long on this because uh, the power brick down there gets super hot and so does the side of the game. So I uh, don't want to play too long. Let me reset. 
um, let's just go down to uh, Sea Monsters. That's number three. Number three, I'm pressing number three. Okay, you have to press pretty hard. Okay, I guess you're in a ship. Oh, okay. So I found out that those are fish and whales in the top part of the sea. But you're supposed to shoot the sea monster at the bottom. Because every time I shot, you know, like accidentally shot the fish or the whale, I lost points. But if I got the sea monster, uh, I gained points. So I'm going to... Again, I don't have to move my joystick for this game. It's just shooting. So I'm just shooting. And you only get a certain amount of... Ah, see, this is pretty hard because you don't want to... It's better when he comes from the left side because then I can gauge it a little bit better than when it comes from the right. Oh, no. See, I got, I got the fish. That was not a good thing. Not a good thing. Okay, I got one. See? Sea monster. I got five points because I got the sea monster. Oh, I got the fish. It took away the five points because I killed the fish. See? See how it goes? Okay, I got, got the sea monster. I got five points. Oh, no. I got the fish. So it took away my five points. So it's a little bit more detailed than just shooting. Okay, I got the sea monster. Five points back. Oh, I keep doing the same thing over and over. It took away my points. But you get the idea. All right. Okay, so now I put in a different cartridge. Brick down, shooting gallery. Yeah, I don't want to play too long because it gets overheated so fast and I don't want to ruin the system. It's so old and pretty rare. So let's get going here. I'll press power. Hopefully it comes on. All right. APF, microcomputer, 78, eight layer. Okay, remember this is a breakdown. So that's going to be a breakout clone, right? So, so I'm going to press one to do just a slow, regular. Okay, here we go. Now, these games are not great. Uh, they're not great with a stick. So, let's see, geez, see, I mean, it's barely, it's not even moving. Okay, my stick, oh, come on. It's, it's not moving. My joystick is not moving. Oh, maybe it needs the left one. Nope. Uh, okay, I don't know what's wrong. Oh, there we go. It moved. It moved. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, it's very crunchy and awful. But you get the idea. It's just really not working so well. Joystick's very, very old. It's like, I don't know, what, 42 years old, so... But uh, not too bad. It's still fun, I guess. Pretty neat. Well, there you go. The MP1000 and the M1000. Well, I got rid of the P, but I guess that's a good thing, right? I have almost a complete collection here, but I am missing Space Destroyers and Roulette. They're pretty expensive on eBay when they do show up, but uh, these other games may go for about 50 bucks each right now. So they are pretty expensive. So not the easiest to collect for, but it's uh, really great to get into if, if you're interested. Now, what do you think of these old fellas? I think that they're really great and should be preserved. Well, I hope you liked the video. Don't forget to put it aside, just a little time to play, and have a great day.